How you doing, this is Brother Green, this is Rivers in the Desert Ministry, Rivers of Living Water in a Dry Place. Thank the Lord for this day that He's made. We're going to rejoice this day and we're going to be glad in it. Um, this is an overview of the uh, of the business structure that um, God had, had laid on my heart for the ministry. And um, if you haven't seen Profitable Ministry, the video Profitable Ministry 2, you must see that before you watch Profitable Ministry 3. Because this is really going to cut against the grain of many of the uh, many of the individuals that are that have been really um, in in growth in um, uh, mainstream religious structures. Okay, so I recommend that you um, watch that first so that you can get a uh, an overview of what um, uh, what this is about. What we're talking about. Okay, the um, it was 35 years ago that God asked me a question, and that question took me off the path where I relied on men's religious systems, okay? And uh, I'm going to put this in a half scale so that I can watch um, what's taking place with the recording, okay? But the question that the Lord asked me w was um, real simple, and it was, um, how does a God who's profitable in all that he does become associated with men's concept of non-profitability. How does a profitable God become associated with the concept of non-profitability? That's a study in itself, my friend. But God question caused me to question everything that I, from then on that I learned over the course of those 35 years. It, I questioned everything about men's, their systems and their orders and who's in charge. And the Lord gave me the answer to this question. It was about seven years ago he gave me the answer. And what he did is he caused a passage in the scripture to literally jump to life as I read it one day. It can be found in the book of Matthew, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 20, 24th verse. And it's where uh, Peter is asked, and I'm going to go through this material really fast. Those that have an ear to hear, Lord, I pray that they hear what we're talking about this day. Okay. Um, Peter was asked by those who collected tribute or taxes uh, whether or not Jesus paid taxes and he was on his way into the house and Peter you know answered them yes he does and as he continued into the house Jesus stopped him and asked him um, Jesus stopped him and asked him the question let me ask you something and the question that Jesus asked Peter was was um, that was the answer to the question that he had asked me 35 years ago. The question was, who do the kings of the earth tax? Who do they tax? The rulers of the systems of the earth, who do they tax? Those that are in authority in the earth realm, who do they tax? Do they tax those that are part of the system, those that are not part of the system? Do they tax strangers or do they tax their own children? Peter answered and said, no, they taxed the strangers. So Jesus said, then the children are free from taxation. The children are free from tribute. The, the children, the children, <clears throat> excuse me, of the king, the children of the kings of the earth are free from taxation. Over the next, um, and I, this is just paraphrased, but over the next 35 years, I've been blessed to, associate, to be associated with many of the various religious systems. God has called on to me to separate myself from the religious systems, to separate from them at all and be, be drawn unto, to be drawn unto him. This is what God is calling to, today. He's calling us to be drawn unto him. This is, this is a falling away from the religious systems, to be drawn unto the Lord, to be aware that we are sons of the Most High God, to be separate, to be separated from the system. God has called me to, uh, unto himself, separating me from the system. And over the time, I've learned that our Lord Jesus Christ never really focused on the creation of a man-made earthly church system. It's man that wanted to make three tabernacles. You know, it's men that want to know who's in charge. And um, the Lord gives us further knowledge in his example by allowing, if you consider he allowed allowed Judas to hold, hold the monies that were collected during the ministry. Now that's a great truth in itself, you know. The ministry is not about earthly wealth, earthly possessions, earthly treasures. 
The ministry is about saving souls and the lifting up of Jesus Christ. If the Lord Jesus Christ be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto himself. The Lord has called us to be fishers of men, not to not to um, search high and low for one proselyte and then make him worse than than um, the system that we've called him into. OK, so. More frequently, as you look around today, the top news stories reveal the different methods showing how the oncoming oclocratic iron and clay system of government is tightening its grip its grip of authority around the necks of the of its sons the sons of the systems the 501c3 church system we see more and more where the king of the earth is beginning to tighten his grip on those systems under obamacare for instance business owners right now are in, in are in the throngs of a legal battle. Business owners are being subjected to harsh legal battles fighting for the right to stand for righteousness. Fighting for the right to say that they have a moral view. They want a moral high ground. They want to live for righteousness. They want to follow Jesus Christ. Legislation right now is being put in place where business owners um, are being um, refrained from saying or proclaiming their faith in America. Go figure. Under Obamacare, uh, in order to implement parts of the so-called free health care system, the free health care bill, business owners are prohibited to state that they stand with Jesus Christ. Business owners are being sued, are being shut down if they don't agree with the government's view of killing babies and the government's view supporting the sodomites. Just recently, an IRS, IRS officials are facing charges that they are they're, that they're asking for records from 501c3 churches to, sh to show what they're praying. Okay, so this is the day that we live in right now. So an avenue must be open, an avenue must be open where we can be about the business of the ministry. The ministry is a business. Jesus said in Luke 2 and 49 unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Was ye not that I must be about my father's business? Jesus said that the sons of the kings of the earth would be free of tribute or taxation. Most of today's churches and religious systems are actually sons of the kings of the earth. Many of men's religious systems are structured under 501c3, non-profitable corporate entities owned by government with government as their head. It is by necessity that the time has come, you know, for me to share these things. We must be about the business of saving souls. God had put this on my heart years ago. And, you know, I've been, con I had really been content with not, I I'm content with the free ministry. I'm content with the avenues that I use online. I'm content with Blog Talk Radio, their free version. I don't even use the paid version. You know, the free version is gives me plenty enough time to come on and speak. But over the years, God has shown me a way to duplicate the fish and the loaves of bread. I propose a, I propose a profitable ministry, ministry structure for people that are wanting to work in the ministry, a structure whereby those who work in the ministry are rewarded for working in the ministry. I propose the business of saving souls that it be ran like a business. Okay, the um, the most effective business structure today is network marketing. It is affiliate marketing. Though many preachers are going to be unwilling to relinquish their control, unwilling to relinquish their power over God's people, one must ask the question: What better way is it to share the gospel? And who teaches about God anyway? It is the Spirit of the Holy Ghost that teaches us about God. It is God that teaches us about God. Anyway, uh, affiliate ministry is a much be better, I feel that an affiliate ministry and an affiliate business structure is a much better business model for spreading the gospel. Under the current business model, the monies that come into the church, they're funneled to the top and they fall under the direction of wh whoever is in charge of the ministry and are closely scrutinized in most cases by the government. I've met so many people, so many individuals in ministry who have been blessed with gifts beyond measure. 
In my, I've met singers, I've met writers, I've met psalmists, I've read playwrights, I've met dancers, preachers, evangelists, teachers, the list goes on and on. Because of the stranglehold that men's organized structure have on an organized church system, many of these same individuals become discouraged when trying to meet the financial needs involved with functioning in their ministry and spreading the gospel. Only men want laborers to work in the ministry and work in the field without hiring. Many work in the ministry without being paid. James 5 and 4 said, Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. The men are the ones that call men and women into the ministry for no hire. Boy, that's good water. Amen. The uh, Matthew 20, starting with verse 1, you know, God never called laborers into his vineyard for free. Consider this parable. Consider this. Matthew 20, verse 1, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, and the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a, pity, a penny. But when the first came, they, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he said, he answered unto one of them, he answered one of them, and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? You notice he only answered one of them. Because <laughs> he knew that they would he would spread the answer to the others. He said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Did not thou agree with me for a penny? Take what is thine and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So then the last shall be the first and the first shall be the last. For many be called, but few be chosen. The uh, This ministry, this financial structure that I propose is a structure where the monies, 80% of the monies that come in, 70% of the monies, 80% of the money, excuse me, that come in, go back to the members that are involved in the ministry. Actually, as much as 90% of the monies that come in. It is the fish and the loaves of bread. Okay. And you'll see as I continue. The, I initiated this structure for organized churchdom a couple years ago. And I did it on a trial basis and tried it out. I was just overwhelmed with the results that I got. And, I, and when I seen how the impact that it had on the internet. And um, I was just amazed. But I really... You know, I made, you know, I, I met a lot of friends and I made a few acquaintances yet, you know, by the spirit of God, I really sense no real leading from God to implement this profitable ministry structure in its entirety at the time. And plus, you know, um, I had all these things that I had drawn up and it was just complicated, you know, but now I'm looking at the sign of the times we're in and um, I see how the iron and clay system is starting to tighten its grip around the neck of its sons. So I see the simplicity of the structure and 
It's in the giving of most of the monies back to those who work in the building up of the ministry. That's the simplicity of it. This business structure is free for anyone to copy and use. You know, I recommend, you know, you you know, you can contact me if you need some information up to what's just overwhelming for me again. But this I recommend using J Rock's affiliate software. Uh, it's great software, it'll get you up and running and familiar with um, affiliate marketing free for up to 50 members and also I recommend using just for host domain hosting software because they're fairly uh, knowledgeable in the way of scripts and PHP and you know when I implemented this software they pretty much put the entire SQL and PHP in place for me the structure is as followed real simple when somebody joins the ministry most of the most of the tabulations are kept online or you can set a idle computer somewhere with a database in it and when someone joins they become an affiliate okay they receive a an affiliate designation or an affiliate ID or affiliate membership and anyone who joins the mem ministry because of the recommendation of this same or said affiliate, they are considered members within that affiliate group. Okay. Now this is a whole nother teaching about tithe and offering because men, and I'm not going to have time to cover this with you today, but men manipulate the children of God with the tithe and offering. Okay. But in actuality, once you become born again and the Lord Jesus Christ takes up residence in your life and takes up residence in your heart one must ask themselves who is the actual true receiver of the tithe and the offering that's even if we were still under the law which we're not we're no longer under the law but that's a whole nother teaching okay the uh, Lord Jesus Christ that dwells with inside of you is the true receiver of the tithe and the offering. You're called to be a steward of the Lord's bounty. So it's okay. And it's going to take, it'll take an adjustment. It'll take a mental adjustment because church systems have really brainwashed God's people into believing that it's, that they should not to eat the good of the lamb. The, um, but the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the lamb. When anyone joins the ministry, they become an affiliate and they receive an affiliate designation. Anyone who joins the ministry because of the recommendation of this, this same affiliate are considered to be members, to be members or partners in that affiliate group, in that affiliate's ministry. And when members give offerings, proceeds, or they render, render financial support to the same ministry, okay, 70% of the monies that are rendered go to the affiliate who's responsible for causing this same member to become affiliated or to join the ministry. Okay. And what I like about J Rock's affiliate software is J Rock's will keep track of all that information for you. It'll keep track of it. It'll it'll track activities. J Rock affiliate software, it'll it'll make splash pages, it'll make newsletters, it'll make emails, it'll make everything so multiple hundreds of thousands can be added to the ministry. The remaining 20% of the 100% that is rendered to the ministry is distributed as follows. Okay? I you know, these are just recommendations, but I recommend I recommend that 20% of the remaining uh, fund is dispersed among all the members. And if, you if you're in a brick and mortar congregation, you, the re what precipitated this concept is watching so many people who work in the ministry. And um, at the end, there's, it seems like everybody just turns their back on them, you know? And I see people who work in the ministry that um, uh, that are just so reliable to the ministry, and some of them, you know, you you see they they don't they some of them don't even have the bare necessities of life, you know, 
Um, this one sister that I just, um, that I know, you know, I, she needed, she needed a place to stay. She needed to move. You know, I, I, I thought there was asbestos in, in, or something in her trailer, you know, and, and I've always, you know, I've always felt like, you know, when affiliated with these, with, with the different churches is that, you know, if you can't go to, you know, if you can't go to the, to the church group that you have a affiliation with and tell them that you have a need. Um, something's out of whack, you know. And through this, through this structure, it is really easy for those within the ministry that are gifted in the building of the ministry, it's really easy for them to take and designate that um, instead of taking members to them, to, you know, to themselves, they can they can designate that when somebody joins, they can say, well, no, I don't, I want this member here to sign up under, along with brother so-and-so's group or sister so-and-so's group. And uh, it doesn't require that a person has to, you know, this type of a structure um, doesn't require that somebody has to be in charge. You know, it doesn't require that somebody has to lead. This is the the only thing, this reason I say that it should be, that things should be set up this way is so that the needs of the congregation could be better met. You know, when you read about the structure of the church in the early church, the um, you see that they had all things in common. No one suffered any lack. And, you know, for us to, I think it would be rather a stretch for us to try to, to even almost in this day and time, um, when the hearts of men and women have been so framed, to even suggest the implementation of the first, um, the early church structure. You know, we must follow the Lord Jesus Christ in all that we do. We must follow after him. And it wasn't, like I say, it wasn't real big emphasis of Jesus to set up churches, to set up early churches. Um, the um, men wanted to set up early churches. But the remaining 20% is distributed as followed, 10% to the operation of the church, especially for a brick and mortar type organization, and 20% to be dispersed among all the members, whether they participate in the financial structure or not. So anyway, there, there it is. There you have it in a nutshell. This is um, Brother Green, Rivers in the Desert Ministry. And um, this video here is Profitable Ministry in number three in a series. Okay, and, and um, later on as we go on, I'm going to um, be giving some tips on uh, some of the software that um, I recommend. But once again, I see this as an opportunity, as an avenue for those that uh, work in the ministry, that those that work online, especially for my friends that operate online ministries that, um, you know, I, I had one friend that needed to take a trip and, and because of um, the urgency, you know, she, she had to go and to ask, you know, had to ask the the members within her following to um, for financial support. I had another another friend of mine, had so many musicians and artists that um, um, because the they want to remain uh, true to their calling uh, for goal, oftentimes the um, requesting for financial support. This is a way that can be very easily implemented into one system that um, would meet the, um, the, the financial needs of the ministry. But anyway, um, if you have any questions, you know, or if, I'll be putting up my contact information, I'll be embedded in it. And um, also I'll be along with this video um, once again, I'm going to be putting some of my um, some of my music that um, that I've been creating lately, so that you can hear. And if you're interested, there's um, or you like what you hear, um, you can um, you know contact me so that you can obtain the uh, the actual CD when it's released. Okay. 
Anyway, Lord bless you. Have a blessed day. And listen only to the spirit of the Holy Ghost that's inside of you. The Lord God Almighty will teach you about God Almighty.